I'm going to try and do now is put a bubble set, sometimes called a swan neck, in a piece of steel conduit in order to overcome an obstacle that's in the way. So we're going to try and produce that in order to get over an obstacle on our assessment. Starting off with our piece which is 600 mil long, we find exactly the centre and then we'll try and show you a technique that we've developed here just to try and give you an idea of how to make that set over the conduit mm -hmm. itself. So what we've done is found the centre of the conduit, our conduit is 600 mil long. We're going to put it into the conduit bending machine and pull it down to give us that shape. Okay, we're not going to put our line at the start of the bend, we're going to put it beyond our start position as discussed earlier, and we're going to pull that one down. Keep this one down. And then we've got to see what it is, the kick position that I need you to be in for this exercise. So we take it over to the bench, take a tape measure, and I'm looking for a kick position where the edge of our conduit is on the bench. I'm looking for the distance from the bench to the bottom of the conduit to be anywhere between 100 and 110 mil, between 10 and 11 centimetres. So if I'm not quite there, I'll need to put a little bit more in. So I'm there at just over, just over 10 and a half centimetres. I'm going with that. So if I was under, I'd have to put a bit more kick in. What you don't want to do is do it way too big because obviously we won't be able to pull the kick out. So that's the first thing I need you to do. Approximately in the middle, kick it up off the bench, so that is between 10 and 11 centimetres. I prefer it to be nearer to 11 than 10. Okay, so we've got our kicked position in between 10 and 11 centimetres, and we can use this as a hooking position in order to fold our two legs back to create this bubble or crank set. Arm in the air, into the machine, and use it as our hooking position. There. Okay, got to still make sure it's straight, so make sure the conduit goes straight up, so we're following the same plane. And I'm going to hook it in there nice and solid, and I'm going to bend this leg back. And stop. I'm going to work out how much more to put in as we go. So I've made, I think there's a certain amount, I'll turn it around and bend the other one, and then we'll work out whether we've got to put a little bit more in. We don't want to overbend, do we? We're trying to be slightly underbend. Take it back out, exactly the same hooking position. So, I've got it exactly hooked again in the same position. Okay. Got to make sure I'm parallel, and we're going to try and bend back the other leg. So looking from the camera side, we can now see whether we're running parallel with the two sides, I can't. So maybe a fraction more, and then we'll look at it. We'll see where we are after that position. Okay, then taking it to a solid surface and offering it up, we're trying to work out whether these two run parallel now with the wall. Okay, we've got our cranking position. If they weren't, we'd put it back in the machine and obviously put a little bit more bend in. Remember I said I'd like these to be underbent rather than overbent in order to play around with it. If we offer it up to a fixture that we've got to crank over, we can see we've cleared it neatly, okay, and we've still got the positions of two saddles to come on that could gently lift it a fraction further. We don't really want this gap to be any more than 15mm as it clears the obstacle itself.